All right, this is a video I've been meaning to make for a while, and we're going to look at some stuff about Oliver sprayers, since we have one outside, and we need to do some work to it. So that's what we're going to do right after this. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man. And recently, I say recently, but last fall, I acquired an Oliver sprayer. Basically, it's the frame and the wheels and three barrels. And I just never saw any of those around this area. I knew they existed, but uh, when one came up on an auction, it was super cheap, so I bought it. However, there are no booms or anything of the sort, and so it's going to take a little bit of reconstructing to make it happen. So, what I have done in recent times, I located a sprayer pump, like exactly the model that would have been from back in the day that was new in the box, and I've got that. And then my buddy Tim, uh, whose grandpa was the Oliver dealer, and dad, they... He sent me the strainer thing that drops down into the top of the barrel to to do the suction from. So we're there, but I still am kind of in the dark on how to make the booms. And, you know, the way I kind of had it worked out in my head, just looking at the pictures of the thing before I got it home, is not going to work. So I'll show you the video. The weather's not good today, so that's why we're down here doing this, but... Uh, I'll show you the video clip I took the other day of walking around it and you can see what I'm talking about as far as the latching goes. All right, so if you look at this thing, it doesn't have the combination of holes that I was hoping that it had to make this work. And it's got these spring pins, which I'm sure had something to do with it. So I'm gonna have to do some closer examining and as you'll see, from the literature if I put this in the video I'm thinking of and talk about that and then also show you that toy I bought but I'm pretty sure that the booms folded straight up and they didn't go over center or whatever so we'll see what we come up with but that's how it's made I mean there's nothing in there but this pin so originally what I had thought was maybe there were holes that it would you know, you just bolt a boom on and then it folds up and latches somehow with the pin or something. But I don't know. I just, I couldn't work it out. So we've got some literature here to look at. And then I actually bought this toy because I thought, hey, you know, little toy sprayer. I'm looking at this to see how you need new tie rods on your tractor, buddy. But anyway, I'm not convinced that this is a thousand percent accurate. I mean, there's obviously some differences, as it is a toy. But this would have been how I would have assumed that it would go. However, from reading some of the literature and stuff, I believe that these booms were made out of aluminum. I read that somewhere, and I don't know. That's probably why not many of them exist anymore, because I can imagine that the bouncing of the aluminum with this chain would have kinked them up and, you know, damaged them. And... Uh, here in a minute when we look at the literature, I believe that the booms were actually not like this toy. They were actually like pressurized booms where the boom where the boom was actually a capped off piece of pipe on both ends and the nozzles were like pierced into it and whatever or however it was made. So if anybody's actually got one out there that they could send me some pictures of how to make these, I would sure like to see that because I can't seem to find anybody who... I find guys who remember having them and they remember this and that, but I've never actually seen a physical picture of how they're made. So that's something we're going to have to investigate in the future here. Uh, these highly detailed co toys are cool, but very fragile. There's a lot of little stuff to break off, but it's a little sprayer pump and the hoses. There's your little spray wand. It's got a little clevis hitch and a little pin to hook it up. 
and it's very top heavy so that's nice so let's slide this back out of the way a little bit and we're gonna look at some of the literature that I have I had always in my red binders that, that I have acquired and filled up over the years I had some different things for sprayers but then I found some more pieces that I didn't have so we'll just quickly browse but Iron Age was the company that they bought and then that was how their sprayers were labeled Oliver Iron Age and there you can see they used the barrel system like one barrel mounted rigid to the back of a tractor two barrels we can take this out I guess and look at it more better and then of course they made like pull type uh, I think they made orchard sprayers and stuff. There you go, multi-use sprayers, what they call that one. But uh, there you see more of like the mounted type on a fleet line tractor or so. And it just was angle iron and barrels. I mean, it wasn't anything. So anyway, as I was saying, on that one, it looks like the there's bracketry and the boom folds around. But now, as I look at this, I think I might have just figured out what was going on. And I guess what I am missing, I need to make, is not just putting booms on, but I need to make this other section of frame. And then what the spring pins were doing, I bet, was letting you adjust the boom height up and down by sliding this whole works up and down. And so I need to get another piece, couple pieces of angle iron, and then my pipe will clamp into that, and then it'll go up and down and such so that's interesting i didn't notice that the first times i looked at it but i bet you that's how it worked and then you can make your booms fold in whatever way you want uh but it's just that i i don't have the the piece there and see then that there's a spring pin on this one and then there's that piece with a hole in it i guess you like clamped it to it so that explains that I bet but we'll still look at all this literature so this piece here with the yellow eh, I don't know that it has a year on it they made 25,000 of these but this would have been earlier than the one I have and it shows the different accessories and things like that but we'll look at the lighter one so here is a brochure for a 201 and 301 field sprayer and you can see there's a super tractor in it so that is about the era of this and these are still mounted style where we have you know a framework that you bolted to the tractor and basically I would say that was not very much fun hooking that up you know because you had to do a lot of lifting and here it shows you how the boom is actually pierced or made with like <clears throat> the 90 degree thing was made in there and it just had like a a thing with threads coming off of it to thread in so it's going to be very difficult to do and i got an idea of what to do to make it close it's not going to be exact but i can make it a wet boom sprayer uh not too difficultly but there it is behind a super 55 and I know a guy who's got one. I don't think his has the booms, but he's got that apparatus and it's in excellent original shape. But he's got that and it's in excellent original shape. And I'll see, I think I have pictures because I remember when it was for sale on the internet and I tried to buy it, but whoever had it wouldn't ship it. So, but it's very excellent original. So we'll put that in and you can see that. <clears throat> and there is more of what I bet I had right there going on. It's made a little different on this one, but <clears throat> extendable framework, you could adjust the height of the boom. There's the mounting <laughs> for that other kind. Boy, that would be a fun time, wouldn't it? To get to do that every time you wanted to use it. High pro pump, that's what I've got. See, the, the thing about the booms is, and the toy doesn't reflect that, you have to have a way 
not only can it go up this way to fold up, but it has to also be able to break away in case you hit something. So it has to be able to turn in two directions. You can't just have, like, bolt a piece of angle iron through the frame and lift it up. No, it doesn't work that way. you got to have enough stuff to, to break away. Consequently, then, if I look here, I have this single... Is it a single piece? I don't even know. Yeah, a single sheet add for one showing it behind the super 55 a 301 sprayer and specs with it that would be kind of handy like as a fence row sprayer see just a single boom with a deal and drive next to it and that's kind of what i'm thinking i'll probably use this one for if all works out you know fill a couple barrels and then just drive around with a wand and make it happen uh let's see what else here do we have any more just 301 we can look at some of these others that i bought in recent times i haven't had time to get plastic for them yet but there's another one labeled iron age and it's got more of like orchard sprayer type stuff and things like that kind of different animals than what we're looking at but that would be neat to find some of those. And there's a brochure more like what, along the line of what we're working with. We just looked at, mounted onto the tractors, super tractors. But like I said, these things are few and far between, it seems like you never ever see them. <clears throat> there it shows booms folded up. Yep, literature, hard to film, but the glare. There's the guy with the, doing something with his long lasting high pro pump. And just the same pictures. I mean, these are obviously just different years, uh, a brochure, you know, and they're highlighting different things, but I mean, <clears throat> This was a totally new concept back in the day because people were, uh, you know, cultivating. And they didn't know about chemicals yet, and there weren't very many. Not the choices we have today. Farmer spraying for livestock comfort and top production. A few minutes is all that's needed. Sure. This one shows a lot of the, like, the different types of pumps and stuff, and that's what I used to find one i don't remember which one i got if i got a 750 but i found one original so that's handy and they have drops on them there's the boom for like just a single boom behind your one barrel let's see here let's still do the we'll do the keep with the 301 theme before we switch to other models so this one here is 1958 and you can see that they have changed it and it is now a 550 tractor with the single barrel and the same type of thing basically identical to that one from a while ago except the art departmented it and made it a 550 to keep up with the times now i've actually got some literature that i don't know how many people <laughs> actually have but this is a Canadian pull type sprayer, and I have never ever seen any one of these in real life. I mean, maybe some people who live up there will have recognized these or whatever, but yeah, I mean, Kilberry Industries manufactured this, and that's a totally different animal. It's a one page deal. Never even really looked at it that close. But it looks like it uses a wet boom as well. But I wonder if they really sold very many of those or if this is just a piece of literature for something that didn't really exist. I don't know. And again, keeping with things that aren't quite what we're talking about, but still interesting. There's the Orchard and Grove sprayers, big sprayers that would like fog driving between the rows with the Orchard tractor and... 
I think they even used like six cylinder engines. I'm sure it'll tell us that in here. But yeah. You definitely get covered on that deal driving through there. This is another thing that just never was around here. I imagine most of these are around like Florida and places, California maybe. I don't know. I've seen them at a show before, but never really registered anything. But there you go. Big six cylinder engine like what's in the tractors is what powers that thing. Two more money saving Olivers. Yeah, I know nothing about those or how they work, so. I'm sure somebody out there though does, or has used one. All right, so now, the main event of what we're talking about. This is what that one actually is out there, an, a 233 field sprayer. You can see it there with the two, the three barrels. And uh, now that I look at this picture, I can see that extra piece of iron in there too. And I see, it's a little bit different though, how how they did it on this one versus that other one, but I'll figure it out. But it's making more sense now after really studying this in more detail. But you see, they're advertising it as it's new, built better to boost farm profits more. Three barrel capacity saves time. They also made it as a single large tank uh, crossways on there uh but anyway i've seen that before in different things three sizes of pto pump rugged number three standard boom adjustable tread widths and so anyway safety safety relief boom hinge prevents damage and i think it just had a spring that was holding it forward and that would do that part of it but the uh, actual pivoting of the, to fold it up is the part that I'm still puzzled on. But, but I do see now how they made it. Uh, let's see what the back of this shows. <clears throat> there you see it in action. And so, yeah, that's what we're after. We're going to try to make it. It's interesting that the, uh, and maybe you can see that on this, the uh, jack is actually the same tube that on it is mounted your selector valve and stuff. They just, it clamps to the top of that pipe. So that's kind of neat because, you know, <laughs> why make another thing when you already had something there? So anyway, this is from 1956 and it's saying that this is new. So I'm saying that 1956 is probably the year that these came out. So right in the, you know, middle of the super era, almost towards the end. Now, fast forward, here is a brochure for a 233, but it has been changed to the 550. So that one was 56 and this one is 58. So that would have been like the first year of the three digits. And there you see it with the horizontal tank. It's basically the same piece of literature with just different <laughs> pictures because it's the same bullet points. It's new. Well, I guess not really new if it's already existed. But there you see the crossways tank and I think it mentions that on here in the back somewhere. Uh, yeah, that's just telling about the spring again. And there it shows it with the barrels. And then there it shows it with your selector valve system. And it just uses, in this rendition of it, it uses the selector with like the T-Jet style selector, which they still make. So that's probably what I'll put back on it. The earlier one looked like it was a cast iron job or something. And I don't know that I could find one of those. So it's probably going to get that set up there. But somewhere I thought that it mentioned 
Oh, there we go. It says extra saving is available if you use your own barrels. You could <laughs> three standard barrels easily fit the frame. Tie rods are provided, so you could get it that way to save money. You can choose any combination of boom sections, boom jet, or handgun. So, <clears throat> yeah, you had some choices, and it was still a 233. Well, I put that away, but there again, if anybody has one of these out there and can send pictures, you just can't quite see in the pictures how that hinge joint is made. And I would like to really see a real one. I can guess kind of how it's made. I see how the booms fold backwards and forwards, but I'm not real sure how that, uh, you know, how it hinges up. I mean, I can figure something out, but I'd like to make it as close as possible. But I'm glad I did do this video because I figured out that there's actually an extra piece of frame. And that's why the spring pins. So that's nifty. I guess we'll finish out by looking at some other sprayer literature. Here's another one I've never ever seen. A 725 trailer type. Complete with tank. And you can see it's made similarly to this 233. But it's not at all made like the later sprayers which you'll see in a minute. But I, I don't know. I wonder if one of those is out there somewhere. It just seems like this would be one of the first pieces of equipment you'd scrap whenever you were done with it. You know. But it shows more of the new. This, uh, oh, Canada. So it was probably the Canadian placement for that other one, 1961. And there's the T-Jet style selector valve. And it just shows those roller little roller pumps. Handgun, boom jet, same stuff that we've seen in all the other literature, but I guess this must have been a Canadian only model. So that's pretty neat. This is super neat, which to my knowledge, there only was one of these ever made. And I know the guy who's got it. He, uh, Ollie Schaefer was his uncle, if I got that right. And so Ollie had this and then now the nephew has it, but it is a like ride-on self-propelled sprayer. And there's a lot of there's several pieces of this literature out there, but as far as I know, they only made one of these in real life. And there it is. And this would have been like 1960. So pretty neat. I mean one of these days I might just have to drive out there and have him show it to us. But it uses, I would assume, like a, you know, V4 Wisconsin engine or something. Oh, there we go. 25 horsepower Wisconsin engine. So, yeah. Those were a thing for a while, right on sprayers like that. But I don't know. I've never used one. I'd like to get one just to play with it and see see what that's like, you know. But around here, the ones you find are either like John Deere or there might be a few international ones I've seen, but mostly deer of that style. So that's pretty neat. Then we have a brochure on just the roller pumps that tell us what what is what. And this is how I knew what to look for. But it's just a high pro pump. You could even get it with a gas engine drive on a field type sprayer. And I see there your safety chain is hooked in the hole for the the top of the power takeoff shield. I bet that bent <laughs> several of them up. But it shows the different models of pump and then, you know, what their gallons are. So that one was 1956. Then we go over to this brochure, which is 1959. And it shows more pumps and stuff, and they're different numbers than before. We had a 6250, a 750, and a 150 in that one. And on this one, we have a 6600, 7500. And so it's basically the same thing, just they switched to different model pumps. This FPO4 positive displacement pump, I've never seen one. I, I don't know what they're claim to fame was or what you know that's kind of neat but i i've just never seen one and i don't know 
what their advantage was other than it looks like it's got an actual piston and connecting rod in it like like an engine almost and you see all that so now if we go down the line we get into the last rendition of sprayers like they made 612 and 680 and I mean I've seen people who have a few of these but they're still very hard to find you know I had a friend a little bit up north of here that said he was going to get one one time so I don't know if he ever did or not or what the how that turned out I'm gonna have to find out from him but see they made like you get mounted sprayers they actually made a really big one that had a like an extra frame and dual tanks on each side and I remember seeing the picture like on a 1950T but I don't know. So there you do like your spraying and planting in one pass, your residual. Camera said it got too hot, so it's probably gonna start acting up, but fender mounted manifold. So you'd have to bolt that to your fender. And then it still uses the T-Jet style selector. And we're getting into the more modern era of sprayers. They still offered a three-point version of it. But uh, we're getting like 300-gallon tanks, you know. Whereas the barrels, you'd only have, what, 150? Because 55-gallon barrels, so. And consequently, here's the sales notes on it. Telling, and it looks in that one like it came out. The frame has the oval logo on it, so I'm not sure what's if they just repurpose some of that boom mounting for this literature and whatever. But it shows the same stuff we just saw in the final brochure. But this this tells the dealer or the salesman what kind of stuff to talk about, you know. The Selectomatic. And you can even see it says T-Valve on it. So T-Jet's brand of stuff strainers and the uh, pressure reducer statistics i don't really need to bore everyone with statistics but anyway sales notes are neat because they they tell you what what the company wanted the dealer to tell the customer so it's kind of neat but anyway that's what I know about sprayers. If somebody else knows more, by all means, send pictures, leave comments, and let's learn some more about them. Because like I said, they are few and far between. This toy isn't necessarily the most accurate depiction. I have a little toy century sprayer, and I think it's the exact same frame. They just put a different tank on it. So the toys are not always the most accurate way to judge how something was, so... I like to use the literature because that's the way it was since the day it was new and you get clues but in this case like for what I'm doing I just don't have quite a good enough clear picture of what I want to see and that is this area right here the hinge apparatus I see that the boom has a special fitting and it's like bolted through and that's how it pivots this away but I need to know how it if the whole bracket pivots up I can make something that does that, no problem, but I would like to have it as close as possible. So, that's what I'm after. If anybody has pictures of that or whatever, like I said, email them to me or leave a comment and tell me more about these. If you used one, tell me about that, you know, or any of these sprayers, because like I said, they're just a lesser known implement that you just don't see. So, I think we'll go ahead and leave this one here and... Like I said, tell me what you know, and as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.